Meditating on impermanence can lead to liberation. In the great perfection of wisdom treatise, Nagarjuna had a Q&A session. Someone asked, not everyone can stop their attachment after seeing impermanence. Many people become more fearful, worried and attached when they see impermanence. For example, when a king's queen was taken away by an ogre, he was worried. His ministers said to him, the queen is still alive, why are you so worried? The king replied, I'm not worried about losing my wife. I'm afraid that the prosperous period is about to pass. It's like a person who loves flowers. When he sees the flowering period is almost over, he becomes more attached to them. As we all know, in Dream of the Red Chamber, Lena Dayu saw the flowers bloom and fade, feeling very sad and burying the flowers. Lin Dayu was the spokesperson for self-pitying and self-love woman. Nagarjuna answered the previous question. If one only realises gross impermanence like this, then even an animal can see it. Therefore, to truly meditate on impermanence, we must meditate on subtle impermanence, which means observing the momentary arising and ceasing of conditioned things, like a waterfall flowing down, like a flame arising and ceasing. All conditioned things are like illusions, deceiving and misleading ordinary beings. After confirming the subtle impermanence of conditioned things, we can achieve three benefits. Number one, non-attachment to all conditioned things. Number two, aspiring for liberation. And number three, a gateway to emptiness. The non-attachment to all conditioned things when we see that all conditioned things are momentary and meaningless, no matter how hard we try, we won't get anything real. As a result, we won't generate or increase attachment, but will stay away from attachment to all conditioned things by the principle of nature. The great perfection of wisdom treatise says, before the Buddha appeared in the world, ordinary beings simply used worldly ways to suppress their afflictions. Now, to help sentient beings eradicate the root of their afflictions, Buddha teaches impermanence. The various heterodox methods simply regard physically staying away from the five desires as liberation. The Buddha said that they are bound by the wrong view of permanence. They seem to be away from the five desires, but they haven't understood subtle impermanence and still believe that there is something permanent. Therefore, they can't be free from attachment, can't eradicate attachment. They can only temporarily suppress their desires but can't eradicate them. The Buddha said that by meditating on the truth of impermanence, one can attain liberation. Meditating on subtle impermanence is truly seeing that by nature, the body and mind, as well as the external world, can't be grasped. Therefore, one naturally lets go. The great perfection of wisdom treatise says, as the sutra states, by meditating on impermanence well, one can eradicate ignorance, cut off attachments in the desire realm, 
form realm and formless realm. Eliminate agitation, arrogance and bonds of the three realms, which are the afflictions of the three realms. Number two, aspiring for liberation. Momentary phenomena are like flowers in the sky. Being caught in these contaminated dependent arising is being bound while releasing from the bondage is liberation. Realizing that conditioned phenomena are momentary, we all know that being caught in the attachment to real existence is like being trapped in a dream, confused, suffering and meaningless. From then on, we will no longer generate afflictions towards illusions. On the other hand, seeing that liberation is possible and not far away, and that the true meaning of life is to practice, realize and attain liberation, we will be fully devoted to practice. In Dream of the Red Chamber, there is a good story about Jen Xian. We will not discuss the plot here. We've invited someone to read Cheng Pu Yeshi Pun Jok's explanation of the story. So feel free to check it out. It's in the video, The Story of the Dream of the Red Chamber. Jen Shayin was initially immersed in the mundane world, attached to a comfortable and leisurely life. Days passed like flowing water, but he never realised that the current life is merely a fleeting illusion. He couldn't see the reality of life, but was trapped in delusion, clinging to illusions. When the illusions disappear, he suffered. By studying the story of Jian Xian and observing life with his case, we can see four types of phenomena. Whatever rises is bound to fall. Whatever accumulation will eventually run out. Whatever comes together is bound to separate. And whatever is born will eventually die. This is seeing the grace and permanence. No matter how perfect your current life is, you are trapped in samsara anyway. Number three, a gateway to emptiness. In this way, see through that the rise and fall, success and failure, joy and sorrow, separation and reunion in the world are like a play on stage. What a mess! As each one leaves, another takes the stage. Seeing these illusions as real, we've been pursuing and grasping them with great effort, but only end up empty-handed and exhausted in samsara, life after life. The fates of sentient beings are more or less the same. Realizing this, you will know how to proceed and how to practice. Starting from gross impermanence and guided by wise teachers, we can further observe subtle impermanence and truly experience the momentary arising and ceasing of life. When we see it clearly, we will not merely talk about gross impermanence and renunciation, but will truly experience samsara as it is. Seeing through the world we live in, we will let go of our attachments and hopes, thus naturally aspire for liberation and start the journey of practice and realisation.